Running a brokerage is hard work. So whether you're focused on building your own sales pipeline, hiring the best agents, leveling up your team's production, or protecting culture you've built, you're in the right place. Real estate brings the challenges, and we share the solution. Welcome to the show dedicated to broker entrepreneurs. Welcome to the Brokerpreneur Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I'm Dr. Ben Spears, the doctor of flow. I'm here as usual with the big guy, Matt by the Sasquatch of brokerage growth. <laughs> Matt, how's it going? I'm doing fantastic. We, so, you know, during the holidays, you know, we went up to Sasquatch land, right? I didn't realize Blue Ridge had so many stories about Sasquatch. Oh, you know it. But I went to the, uh, I went to the, the, uh, a Bigfoot Expedition Museum and all that kind of stuff. And it was absolutely just a tremendous amount of fun. And uh, we'll have to talk about that on some upcoming podcasts. But this podcast, I'm not going to clutter it anymore. I can't wait to get this guest. Quit cluttering it, man. I'm going to stop cluttering. I'm going to quit being the Bigfoot of clutter. And uh, and we're going to get directly to introducing our guest. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for, for our uh, listeners from um, way back, you know, we've interviewed Bob Bird a couple times, the author of The, the Go-Giver. Um, he's uh, co-writing a book called Streetwise to Saleswise with our next guest. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're so super excited Absolutely. about it. Um, Jeff West, and we're going to bring him on just a second, uh, 30 plus years in sales and sales management, 10 years retired. A little bit jealous about that, but yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> but he's not really retired. Yeah, exactly. He's an author, uh, published multiple books. He's won four four different awards for his writing. Uh, he's a public speaker. I can go on and on. But let's go ahead and bring him on because I just want him to talk about it. Jeff, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful, guys. I am so honored to be on your show with you today. Thank you for having me on. We we love you. Uh, we love you being here. Anything we can do to uh, to get to uh, get the message that I know you and Bob push out to everybody because it's such a crucial message on on finding real business success. Every chance we get to be able to share that with you know guests, be able to share that with our audience. We love doing that. So we appreciate and are super grateful you're here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. So um, I have to ask, right? Because again, I, I I've got your bio right here in front of me, but. You know, I'm thinking that, you know, there was this day that you were six or seven years old, right? And you were outside and you were playing and you had some Tonka trucks or something like that. And uh, you were like, you know what? These trucks need insurance. These trucks need insurance. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go into sales and sales management and then eventually, you know, write, <laughs> write books, uh, you know, that are going to change the world. Uh, is, is that kind of how it happened? Or tell us a little bit maybe if it's different. Probably not. But if it is different, (laughs) let us know how it was. Uh, Oh, yes. I was an overnight success. That's the way it worked. Uh, (laughs) Definitely that way. Actually, my tour, my my journey, uh, I originally had planned to teach. As a matter of fact, I've got a bachelor's degree in music education and a master's degree in music composition. And quite frankly, those two degrees and uh, six dollars or so will get me a cup of coffee at Starbucks. (laughs) 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 But uh, I ended up in sales right out of college. Uh, my wife needed to finish her degree. There weren't any teaching jobs open at the time in that area where she needed to finish up. And so I ended up getting my first job in sales and it was with a musical instrument company kind of fit my yeah, education yeah. somewhat. And then because of the nature of sales, I was immediately making 50% more than I would have made teaching. So I stayed there and uh, went from uh, the musical instrument to, um, industry to the industrial uniform industry. Learned a lot in that industry about how to prospect and uh, put people at ease quickly as, as much as you could in that industry. Right. And then uh, that company got bought out. I ended up going uh, in the insurance industry. I don't know if I should say the name. If I shouldn't say the name. You can edit it out. I'll leave space. Uh, <laughs> it was with Aflac. And I was a, a district manager for eight years, a regional manager for two, and a state manager down in the Houston area for Texas for the last 10 years that I worked in that industry. And then I had, during that time, I'd met somebody that you guys love as much as I do, a guy named Bob Berg. Mm -hmm. And if we have time, I'll actually tell you the story when we met, but the, uh, his encouragement, the way he is as a person, it was just incredible. And as I was uh, beginning to write, I sent him uh, my, a copy of my first manuscript, the unexpected tour guide. And his feedback and his encouragement and his connections were incredible that he, he just, he did what he always does. He's the go-giver that he said, everybody thinks he is. That's exactly who he is. Right. So 
that's what got me to writing and speaking. And I, I found out that I just absolutely love it. It's my sweet spot. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely love that. And that's super interesting with, with your degrees in music. Matt is actually a professional singer. <laughs> Really? Why don't we take 10 seconds? No. It's like the exact opposite. If there was an unprofessional singer, then that would be, that would be me. Yeah. So we use Squadcast for our podcast. If I start singing, Squadcast would just kick us off. And I don't mean today. I mean, period. They'd Forever. Be like, Look, we can't do this ever again. Right? We can't have that being recorded. It's that bad. I tried, everybody. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, but you'll, you'll enjoy. Go ahead. You got to tell us a story. I, I'd, I'd like to hear okay. a little bit more about it. We, you know, we love Bob. You love Bob. The audience loves Bob. Right. Like, so tell us, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that story, if you don't mind. Well, in January of the year 2000, I had a sales mentor of mine who gave me two books. And he said, Jeff West, I want you to read these two books. Now, at this time, I was a district manager with IFLAC. I was making decent money, but I would make my quota one year, miss it the next and we were all self-employed. I wasn't in danger of getting fired, but you know, I wasn't a superstar. Frank gave me those two books and uh, he said, you need to read these. And I said, I'm a grown man. I'll make my own decision. And I'm reading those books. <laughs> so, one, of them, one of them was John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable yep. Laws of Leadership, which I cannot recommend enough for everyone who's yep. leading a team. Yep. Uh, so the brokerage is uh, that's perfect for them. The other was a book that by an author I'd never heard of. It was called Endless Referrals by Bob Berg. Mm -hmm. And that I'm not even slightly exaggerating. Applying what I learned in those two books, it changed the direction of my career completely. Yeah. I went from a district manager that was okay, and two years later I was a regional manager who was good and a state manager for 10 years after that who was good. Right. And it was just that big of a difference. But anyway, one day I was in my office, and oh, during that time, th during that time, I would go in every single month and talk to the new agent sales school with Aflac, and I would I would tell them about uh, that would be a little bit of a motivational thing about my story because it really was it is a rags to riches kind of story, right. but I would always promote endless referrals really hard because I think the book's that great. Right. I got a phone call one day when I was a regional manager, and my administrator says, uh, "You have a phone call," and I said, "Who's it from?" She said, "Somebody named Bob Berg." I thought, sure, my <laughs> buddies are pulling at my leg. This is a prank on me. Right. So I get on the call and Bob has this positive vocal velocity that yes, we've all heard. Yeah. And I get on the call and he says, uh, hi, Jeff, this is Bob Berg. And I said, sure it is, fella. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> and he said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, is this really Bob Berg? <laughs> he said, this is really Bob Berg. <laughs> That's said, awesome. So embarrassed. And then I, so I told him, how much the book had meant to me and I'd never met him. And I told him how much I promote it. Right. Long story short, as Humphrey Bogart might say, it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's awesome. And we just, as the years went on, I helped Bob. He was prospecting uh, Aflac. That's why he had called me. And I, uh, we became friends. That's, that was 20 plus years ago now, I guess. Yeah. Right. And he, I literally consider him one of my dearest and best friends. I really do. Such a great guy. That's an awesome story. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and it was Y2K, right? Right. <laughs> January 2000. You guys were just wondering if the world was going to end at that time. So. <laughs> right. If the phone was even working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, the gray uh, hair is not by accident, I'll tell you. <laughs> I hear you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> too good. Too good. So, I, ha I have to ask, right? So, uh, streetwise to saleswise. Right. Tell, tell us how that came about and give me like a, a brief, a brief synopsis of, of what this book is. It's pre-orders uh, tomorrow, right? That's when it starts or you can pre everybody can pre-order it now. It goes live tomorrow. It's, it's released data tomorrow. Perfect. And I'll tell your audience this. I don't know if they'll get this in time, but Barnes and Noble is actually overachieving. And even though it's on pre-order, they're already sending them out. So it's a good thing. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, the, Love that. uh, about a year ago, I was doing the book launch. I had written a book uh, in 2022 uh, with Lisa Wilbur, who is Avon's fifth highest earning producer in history. She, she, she's just been huge with the company. And uh, we wrote a book called Said the Lady with the Blue Hair. And it was we were in launch mode last year, right at the end of the year. And Bob had sent me an email on something else because it was a a sales post he was going to make. He just wanted my opinion on something. Right. And so I, I sent it back with the opinion. But one little comment he put at the very end of the email was, 
and save this because when we do our parable, I want, we'll have this available. <laughs> and so I replied to his email and then I put a PS. By the way, if you're serious, oh yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and so we, we made the decision then. And he had some material that he had had for years and even a little sales course called uh, Become Objection Proof. And the concept is let, let's get salespeople prepared both in in uh, whatever the industry, but let's get them prepared to be able to kind of dissolve or, or neutralize most objections before they even get voiced, but then how to effectively work with an objection when it happens so that not only are you able to help the prospect solve an issue that they've got, you'll also be able to do so in such a way that creates a bond. Right. And so we talked about what to do on, on that. And we use some of my training because my training on fusion points is about creating that bond and objection proof. The process we use is exactly, mm -hmm. it's a perfect fit. Right. And so we started working on it. Well, I, I was trying to decide what the storyline was going to be because my job was as the lead writer was to write the fiction. Uh, you know how when Bob and John David Mann did The Go-Giver, uh, Bob primarily wrote the fiction. It was sales training. It was primarily Bob's sales training in it in training in endless referrals, et cetera. Right. But when we, uh, we started looking at that, I'm trying to come up with a storyline, just have a good time with it. Well, I, uh, my wife and I were in New Orleans right around uh, uh, December 30th, uh, 31st, January 1st and 2nd of, of the 2022 to 2023 timeframe. We're sitting up having a lunch on a balcony at a restaurant and this street singer, which I, I love music anyway. And there was a street singer out there that was really good. And, and we're sitting there and all of a sudden the entire storyline came to me. I'm sitting there making notes because I knew exactly what I was going to do. But the storyline is about a kid in New Orleans. I say kid as a young man uh, who he grew up on the streets of New Orleans. He's a little bit of a, of a uh, he can be a little bit of a smart mouth. And he unintentionally, uh, as it says on the back of the book jacket, he wise cracks him way out of his way out of a job and into a sales career for which he is totally not prepared. And so it's taking someone who has zero experience in sales. And it's it's the evolution that we take them through, right. not just to make them a better salesperson, but also to make them a better human being, because he's got some issues he needs to deal with. And then I work in a secondary character who's actually a New Orleans street busker. It's a singer. And I. I like to weave, weave two storylines together a lot. I tend to do that in, in books. And uh, the the journey that happens over the year, I've not had one single person who's read it yet that didn't tell me they love the story, even people that aren't in sales. So I'm, and that's always my goal, guys. I, I want to teach things. I want salespeople and leaders of sales teams to get get things right quickly so that they can make a living because I know that those beginning years are tough. I also want to equip the sales leaders about, okay, this is how you want to effectively work with your team. You don't want to just be an autocrat. You want to, you want to right. make this work. And so I, I love doing those things. And I love writing a story that will draw that out. And Bob and I worked on it. And, and uh, it's something I think we're both really proud of. I really do. It's, it's I, I, the endorsements we're getting, even from Berkshire Hathaway and some others, it's, it's just uh, I'm very proud of my co-author and I think we've done good work. I love it. I love it. We're going to order a couple of copies. So we've got a, we've got yeah. a mastermind that we have for real estate agents and brokers on, uh, on Thursday. That's kind of open to, to everybody. And we always have some giveaways and we've given away the go-giver several times to, to people. And, and, you know, the go-giver of course is a series as we all know. And so some people have the, have the first one, but they don't have the fourth one or, or whatever. Right. So we, you know, we give those away. Well, now we got something else to give away. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> so we're going to order some yeah, copies of it sure. automatically. And we'll talk it up on, on this coming Thursday and the next couple of Thursdays. And uh, you know, cause it sounds like just an incredible story. Now that means that we got to get on the read really quick. Cause we want to make sure that we, we get the story ahead, ahead of everybody else. So, uh, so we'll dig into, we'll dig into all that. We love that. So <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about let's talk sales for just a second, right? If uh, if, that's, if that's okay, and uh, and if this is something that that you actually discuss in the book, man, just to just tie the just tie the two of those those things together. So we know right now in sales, specifically real estate and everything, there's you know it always seems that there's a bumpy road in sales. Never seems like it's never seems like it's easy. There's always the the threat of there being an issue, and markets are always shifting, and the only constant in real estate is change and, and all that kind of stuff, right? So as a uh, so our our audience is real estate brokers who really want to help their real estate agents grow. 
And they also want to attract other top talent who appreciates their leadership to potentially become part of their, to become part of their company. Right. What right now it, do you think because of what's happening in, in the markets, if, if you were a real estate broker, or if you have advice for a real estate broker, what's the messaging that they should be getting out right now to their, to their, their current agents and potential agents in the market to help those agents not struggle through any kind of shift that we're going in right now? Well, you know, that's a great question. Uh, and because that's, a, that's something that is not just a phenomenon in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see that same phenomenon across all industries. Yeah. And as the, the brokerage itself, as they're thinking about how to work with their sales team, what my advice is always going to be, and it, it does pick, piggyback on the book because uh, the sales manager, the sales leader is a gentleman named Andre. And you'll see that as you go through the book. And the way he coaches is one of the reasons that he retains salespeople because as, as a broker, the, the biggest thing that can kill your success, in my opinion, is it, it's not the economy. It's not the, the political landscape. It's not uh, how, how, what the pricing is doing. The biggest single factor that's going to determine your success as a broker is how your agents, it's how your prospects in the marketplace, how your, your current customers decide to do one simple thing. It's when they make the decision, when it comes to you, will they persist or will they quit? Hey, Dr. Ben here. I hope you're enjoying this episode. If sometimes you feel overloaded or alone when it comes to building your brokerage, I want you to know that we are here for you. There's so much support available to agents, but hardly any dedicated to brokers. I want to personally invite you to schedule a complimentary strategy call where Matt will help you build a three-step profitability plan that will immediately produce results. This is not a sales pitch. There's no obligation. Simply click the link in the description below. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, because everything else takes care of itself. If you're losing your agents all the time because of turnover, then what you have to do is develop that ability. And in the book, we draw it out really well. Uh, it, I'd call it creating fusion points, but you're going to create those moments with your individual sales reps and with them as a group, with the agents, where you're combining uh, solid trainings because you have to equip your team. And, right. and, and it's just like when I was leading 400 volunteer insurance agents, that just doesn't automatically happen. You have to put that effort in, but then you're looking to create that connection with logic and positive emotion as a leader. And what it will do is it's going to make them believe in you and, and survive off your belief as times are fluctuating and they'll survive off of that until they get on their feet. Love it. And then the second thing that I would recommend, this is really more about the agents, but the leaders got to teach the agents this too. It's uh, to successfully navigate the highs and lows of any sales career. You can't just look at it the way a lot of people do, where it's, I get paid when I make a sale. Now, we all know that that is actually the case. It's, we get paid when we make a sale. But that being said, you can't really look at it like that. You have to think, you have to get your team focused on what's the average I'm making per prospect. You know, you're there. What you want that team to do is stay in contact with people all the time, even if they're not buying anything, because right. you don't want your customer to be your, your a one time uh, shot. You want to become that real estate agent for that customer forever. Yeah. You want to be the only person they think of. If I'm, when I'm selling this house and buying the next one, I'm coming to you. Right. And you do that by keeping that constant relationship going. And then uh, as a leader, what I would do is focus them on, on uh, let's, let's look at what you're making per call. Don't get too wrapped up in the highs and lows. Don't get wrapped up, okay, I made a large uh, commission check on the sale of this home and I didn't make anything for two weeks. Think of it in terms of how much activity that you're doing and divide that commission out by the average number of contacts. Because what it will do for that agent, they'll know even if it's only $200 or $300, whatever it works out to be for them, what it will do mentally is it's, if you can get them to understand the concept, which we draw out in the book, it's about, I can, I'm earning $200 per contact that I keep, whether they say yes, whether they say no, whether they say not right now. And I'm going to keep doing that because I know every time I do it, it's going to work. Uh, when I was in the industrial uniform industry, I walked into a door one day and I, uh, by the way, I learned that concept originally 
uh, in a book by Frank Betcher called How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling. I've read that in 1980-something, 1981 <laughs> or 82. But he, he talked about that concept. Well, in the industrial uniform industry, I had done the math. I knew the average company that I called on, I made $23 per cold call. That's what it amounted to. And so I walked, and it didn't matter what the market was doing because it changes all the time. Right. But I went into a place one day, and it was it was on a Monday morning, and the, and the owner of the company was behind the administrative assistant there at the front desk. And I literally had only gotten my name out in the company name, and he went off on me. He said, Uniform companies are all owned by the mafia. You're all bad. We don't like any of them. I, 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 I don't even remember everything he said. And I just kind of smiled and he finished up and I said, well, look, thank you for the $23. And I turned to walk around and go out the door. He said, wait a minute. What do you mean? Thank you for the $23. And so I turned around and I explained the concept about how to look at that. So the highs and lows are easier. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, I need to have you come in and talk to my sales team. And I looked at him. I said, for a fee, little <laughs> did I know I was in the future. <laughs> I love it. You should have said, well, that, well, I'll have to ask my mob boss if I can do that. <laughs> yeah, again, yeah. I'll have to ask the capo, right? <laughs> so, uh, so I absolutely love that. And so I've got to point this out. So as you were talking through that, man, don't be transactional, be relational is what you're talking about, yeah. right? Because all Absolutely. of those people are about relationships and, and you're monetizing that, which I, which I love, right? Because it keeps that mind space right. in, the, in the right place. It keeps your motivation in the right place, but it is not about the transaction. It is about, absolutely. it's absolutely positively about the relationship. It's about creating fusion points. It's about making yeah. that loyalty happen between your clients and yourself. And also for the broker, it's about creating fusion points and making that loyalty happen, yeah. not just with some clients when you sell, but also with your team that you're yeah. building. Yeah. And when they're, be- you, you can do this in a way where they become so loyal to you, they'll never go to work anywhere else. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So it's, it's about equipping them. And the, I think we do a good job in the book because we really approach it from both the sales way. We teach salespeople how to create that with a prospect that's never even met them. But we also teach uh, a leadership style that does the same thing. Yeah, I love I love that for sure. And speaking of leadership, right? Um, so I'm always thinking, right? Like we got all these real estate brokers who are sit- who are sitting right here listening to us right now, and we we speak with so so many of them as well in our masterminds that we do every day, and we just hear every now and then like, gosh, you know, uh, my agents are so focused on like either that next that next you know that next deal or that next. Um, a transaction like, like we're talking about. And I want to ask Matt a question, right? 30 years, like 300 years experience as a broker. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what I was doing in 1981, Jeff. You guys, might have been, if, if you were in school, I'd be surprised. Yeah, I was <laughs> born. <laughs> that year I was born. But that being said, Matt, and then I, I want Jeff to kind of follow up on this. Matt, l- let me know, right? Like you've you've been in charge of gosh, hundreds if not thousands of agents. How how did you get them to focus on just taking taking care and building those relationships inside their yeah. database? We talk about that sixty percent all the time, um, and not only focused on well, let me just put everybody aside and where's that next check coming from? Yeah. So uh, so how you say that matters, right? How did I get them to do that? man, getting them to do that, that's kind of a, that's kind of tricky. I didn't really get them to do that, right? I motivated them to make the choice to do that. So you have to, you have to help them understand what the benefit to them is in that situation. And when they understand the benefit to them in that situation, you know, I guess that's getting them to do that, but, For sure. but you know, I gotta, I have to put that qualifier in there, right? It is about, it's about people showing people a path that if you do these things, you can have what you want. That's really what the, that's really what the key is. And, and the same thing with brokers with recruiting. Right. So we talk a lot about recruiting. Why do brokers want to recruit? Most brokers hate recruiting. Why do they want to? Why do they want to recruit? It's because they're trying to accomplish something financially. That's really what they need to focus on. We tell people all the time. The reason why your recruiting isn't working is because you're recruiting. And so being able to focus on the right part of what you do and when looking at it the right way is what allows your agents to treat the prospects the right way and what allows brokers to treat recruits the right way. And that's ultimately what's going to allow them to allow them to win. Right, Jeff, do you want to you want to chime in on that? 
Oh, you're absolutely correct. And I, I love it when I'm on shows with people who understand uh, they've got the right mindset about things. It is all, it doesn't matter if you're talking to a prospect, mm -hmm. a client, a long-term relationship, right. it's about what's in it for them. And that includes the broker. And I'm really interested, Matt, when you get a chance to get it, dive into the book, uh, I'll be interested to see your feedback on the recruiting style of Andre, because it's oh, exactly right. the same thing a broker should do. It's exactly what I taught my uh, coordinators, my managers in the insurance industry to do, because it, it's, you're not chasing, you're looking for someone who you're trying to find out, okay, what do they want in their life? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can we help them get that? Right. And then if you can, then you say, okay, well, what you want, I got some good news for you. This you, matches you that pretty well. <laughs> and then you can walk them through the scenario. And, and someone, uh, I, I laughed at because I was at, at an insurance industry event a while back and uh, someone was talking about that they didn't care to recruit. And I said, well, you, do you like to sell? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, how do you sell? So I asked them the questions and they, they sold in the right way. They were asking questions, looking to, to find out how they could help someone and put the, thing, put the, the two entities together, basically. And I said, think of recruiting the same way and you'll never not like recruiting. Yeah. You're not looking to get somebody to come on board with it. You're looking to find people who are looking for something that this career fits and then you help them get it. Absolutely. Uh, I have a special, special thing for you, Matt, that I just thought about this like a second ago. You were talking about your singing. There's a little snippet in the book about someone who you may share some some things about, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I've been here. It's, it's early on in the book. It's like in the second chapter or third chapter or something like that. But it's... Uh, it, it will be entertaining, I think. So uh, I can't, I can't wait. Same. We're going to order the book like immediately. Right. And, and is it on audible as can we, can we listen to it? Oh, I'll have it's, it this afternoon. audible hardback and uh, Kindle. Yeah. I'll have it this afternoon. So I uh, get into, and get digging into it. I can't, I can't wait. You got me so stinking excited about it. Yeah. So same fine. here. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, speaking of that, we want everybody to know how to get yeah. it. Right. And we also want everybody to know how to get in contact with Jeff um, if you're just like, man, I just want to meet a really cool guy. Uh, Jeff, why don't you let me know and let our listeners know what's the best way to learn more about you, the best way to, um, you know, get their hands on that book, of course, and then also, you know, ways to just uh, uh, maybe uh, connect with you um, outside, of, sure. uh, outside of that. Sure. Uh, the best way to kind of follow what I'm doing, well, let's first talk about the book. The best way to... Uh, find the information on the book. You can even download the first couple of chapters if you'd like, uh, both either in a PDF or the audio book. Um, you can it's go to streetwise2salswise.com. Street, uh, streetwise to saleswisecom so it's easy to remember. If someone is looking to connect with me because maybe they have a sales team they would like for me to come and work with, go to fusionpoints.com. But if you lose track, just go to jeffcwest.com because everything's really sitting there. It's just easier to promote it the other way, right? <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's it's uh, it's such a joy to be at this stage, I guess, uh, when the when the book's completed and it's everything's yeah. ready to roll, yeah. and it's already the work's done. It's just about going out and playing with guys like you and just having a good time and right. talking about sales. It's 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 a good time in life. I love but, it. Uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook. We've even got a launch group for the Facebook for a launch group in Facebook for the new book. Uh, but connect with me on Facebook at Jeff C. West, or I think it's Jeff West 30, 332 or something, but you'll, you'll see the links on my website. So, and I'm also on LinkedIn and uh, everybody should feel so welcome, please to connect with me at any time. That's so good. Yeah, I love that. And everything that he just said, I'm going to put in the description below, of course. Um, and uh, for those again, who just been around for a while, you know, we do showcase pages for all of our guests. And so there'll be all those different ways to connect with Jeff on that page as well. Matt, any other questions that you have for Jeff? Otherwise, I'm going to thank him real hard. Yep, thank him real hard. We we could sit here and talk about this is sales. How can you not love talking about sales, right? <laughs> so we could we could yeah. talk about that all day. Jeff, we'll have to get you to come back on, 100%. Uh, especially after we read the book, because I'm sure that's going to give us a frame of reference that we can talk a little bit more about about some of this. We'd love to we'd love to do that. You know, we want to help you and Bob. However, we can help you and Bob. Thank you again to Bob Berg for getting us connected. We can't tell you how much we have, we appreciate all of that. And uh, and so you know. Uh, beyond that, right? I'm going to let Ben wrap it up. 
because uh, because I'll just keep talking. Everybody knows that I don't sing, <laughs> but I'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> get some auto tune in here. That's right. <laughs> it's been an honor, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, or any of those platforms, make sure you hit that follow button. If you're watching this on YouTube, what's up? Make sure you hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside it, get notified every time we drop a new episode. There's no better time than the present than um, after you go to all those places that Jeff told you to go. Then go to brokerpreneurpodcast.com. Check out all the cool things that we have there to help you grow your brokerage no matter what phase or stage of the business that you're in. Um, as always, we have links down there below uh, for some really uh, cool free recruiting stuff, uh, masterminds that you can join. We'd love to see you and actually meet you in person. Matt, we yes, bring man. on amazing guests, just like Jeff. Uh, I don't know about just like Jeff. Ooh, Jeff's a one of a kind. Yeah. For one reason. <laughs> and one reason alone. Tell them why that is. Man, we just want to be part of your win. That's right. Thanks. Right. Thank you, guys. 